Alicia McPeak here with my brother, Zach Marcy. Okay, I'm really excited to talk to you guys today because we are going to teach you and talk to you about how to become instantly happy. So Is that anybody possible, Alicia? So it's more possible than you could than you probably think. In so fact, piggybacking <laughs> off of that, think. You know, Alicia, we're gonna take it there. Are you ready? I'm ready. I want you to think you wake up in the morning and you have zero in your bank account. All of your money just disappears. Think about that. How do you feel? Stressed. Alicia. Panicked. Alicia, right Fearful. now. You woke, up, <laughs> you woke up in the morning and suddenly you realize you had $1.7 billion just instantly appear in your bank account. How do you feel? Like I can have a great day. <laughs> but understand, understand these are events, right? Right. But it's our perception of events. It's our perception of life that it, it's our filter. It isn't the actual life. Don't get me wrong. I understand like bad events happening. Uh, uh, case in point, when we thought mom had had a heart attack and she suddenly tells us, I don't know if you knew about this, but she suddenly tells me like, five months down the road that she'd been getting treated. And I'm like, wait, what? Did, did you know this story? <laughs> Needless to say, my perception in that moment, it was difficult. It was hard to deal with. And yeah, it sucked. And I let mom have it just like she would let me have it if I tried to hide something like that from her. But We'll, we'll talk about that later on. So now another we, conversation. Another now, day. now you're like, wait a minute. I'm curious. I, I, I want to know <sighs> this. Like, how did that happen? But it's our perception of it, right? Something uh, we're perceiving something bad, tremendously bad happening. Right. And then we go into this pattern, the cycle, right? Exactly. But it's, it's the cycle. It's, it's all those things that we are actually in control of. I'm not saying this event wasn't terrible. What I'm saying is our reaction to it is well within our control. Now, <clears throat> one thing that we are instantly able to be happy and release feel good hormones like serotonin is by doing this. Nice smile. It's, it's a smile. Smiling actually creates neuro, a neurochemical reaction in our body. And we instantaneously, it's really, really hard to smile and feel like shit at the same time. Yeah. And there's a reason why. There's neurochemicals. The reason why somebody flashes a smile at you, even if you're mad, you smile back or you immediately feel good or you feel good about that person. You know, um, they had a study, man, I want to say this was in Time Magazine, where they, uh, they took participants and they said, uh, they go, hey, which of these people live a good life? Which of these people look like they would be your friend? And it was, it, it was something ridiculous, like, like 89%, if I remember correctly, it's like it was 88.3 or 89.3% of the people we're choosing the people that had either a grin or a smile on their face as trustworthy, as, as attractive, as making them feel good, as somebody that they wanted to be friends with, because it isn't even just our smile, but it's also the people that are around us that are influencing us with that. You want to be instantly happy, surround yourself with amazing smiling people, start smiling. Be with people that have a joyous attitude, even in spite of things that are going on, because it isn't the fact that bad things don't happen. It's our reaction to it that creates resourcefulness, that creates joy, that gives us the capability of being able to pull ourselves out of the gutter or the proverbial down times and into better moments of happiness. So I love the whole concept of the fact that it's our perception because literally everything in our life is our perception. And we come to the table with our own set of glasses that we look out of and that those glasses that we put on every day, we, we have them on 
make me see the situation one way and you see the situation another. And the biggest place I see this is with children who grow up in the same family. In fact, you and I <laughs> are, are two, this, two people who grew up in the same family. And I had very one very different perception than you had. And it's not, it's not that we didn't have some unique experiences. No question we did where there's boy, boy versus girl. I'm, I'm a few years older than you. So there's things that would make a difference, but but really, we still had the same parents, right? And we had very different perceptions. And I will tell you guys, mine wasn't of a happy, um, fun, joyous life. Mine was very negative and Zach's wasn't. So that was really interesting to me when I started learning about how we perceive things. And this is across the board. So when you're talking about perception of, of things going on around you, what you're dealing with here is the fact that your emotions, we let our emotions run off with us instead of being in control of our emotions. So we just think that we are supposed to feel this way. I'm, I'm upset. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. I'm tired. And we become that thing instead of saying, okay, that is a, so there's a landmark talks about being, you can, you can feel tired, but not be tired. You don't have to be that way, right? You don't have to become that. And that's what happens. Am I going a little too deep here? Because it's really, it really no, is. No, 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 no. Okay. Actually, I love that. And let me, let me piggyback off of that real quick. Um, you know, it, and that's a thing, like, just before we got on here, guys, um, Alicia and I were, were kind of like, like going back and forth about labels. But, you know, we, you and I both had gotten into very deep conversation with clients earlier today, and we, uh, we worked really hard as coaches on ourselves and also on our clients to dissociate an experience from the person and creating a gap between the label on the experience and ownership and identity. Because they aren't the same. Our identity is defined by us. The moment you say, I am, you are accepting something. Maybe it's a temporary situation. Crap, I keep, I, I, I have some really good notes written up on, uh, on this in particular. I think I do too. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, our identity, the, the moment that you say, I am, it starts latching your identity onto whatever might be a, a, a temporary situation or a situation you don't want associated with your identity, but your identity is 100% in, in your control. You choose to be what you are. You do. Everybody talks about nature versus nurture, but that's the thing. Alicia and I were born in the same family. True. Raised by the same mother and father. True. Nine years apart. True. Did mom and dad back off of me more and were a lot harder on Alicia? Yes, because our parents suddenly realized that they were really hyper strict and and uh, like uh, drove you in a certain way. Quite frankly, I just. Was better you just were better hiding it. I know. I was better at getting away with stuff because I know <laughs> you're getting in trouble all the time. I go, oh, I'm not going to do that. I hear so, that a lot from uh, you. Were, you were so not clever at getting away with things, but no. understand, understand, understand. <laughs> and, and, and staying on topic here, there were a lot of things that in our identities, we, uh, we came through in different ways. And we both come to the same conclusion, work with our clients in a certain way that identity is fluid. It's not fixed. And it is whatever we choose to make it. Because in all honesty, a lot of the discipline and uh, things that mom and dad raised you with gave you an opportunity to realize, okay, there's a lot of things that I don't want to do with my own children. And you have managed to raise three freaking phenomenal and amazing daughters and, and now working with two other uh stepchildren at the same time and now uh, being a grandmother that can spoil the hell out of the kids i'm really good <laughs> <laughs> man you want to see mom and dad with uh, with uh with my children man it's not even funny yeah i don't have but that experience. anyway but another topic for another time but yeah. understand that these uh, a lot of these experiences 
instead of creating an identity, what we've done is we've taken those experiences, we are choosing to do with those experiences as either useless and tossing them or as a, a lesson to do something with while shaping and forging our identity each step of the way. Go ahead. Okay, so here's what I want to say about that. I'm going to use a personal story. And I, I talked about this in the past. So my personal story is I was in a very unhappy marriage for many years. And uh, I had the perception that I was just an unhappy person. And so it caused me not to make any moves. And as I, I started really growing and digging into personal growth, I'll, ne I'll never forget the day that it was like, oh, holy crap, I have to do something about this. Because it was the moment where somebody said, if you don't like your life, it's completely your responsibility. You've chosen that life. And I was like, shoot. But then I went, wait a minute. If this is what I've chosen, I can choose something else. Like it was, it was like, holy crap, kick me in the butt and so freeing at the same time. Like we literally can choose the way we think, the way we react, the way we feel, but we can completely choose our life. And I, I think I'll, back to an emotion thing, people think that they don't have choices about their emotions. They really think they don't. They, they just respond or actually, actually they just react. They don't even respond. They react, 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 react. And then it becomes, I'm not going to get it right, but Dr. Joseph Dispenza says it's something like, you know, you're in a bad mood because something happened and that bad mood becomes a bad attitude and that bad attitude becomes a bad personality. So it's who you end up becoming. And it's all about wiring neural pathways when we're coming at it from that perspective. Yeah, and Joe, Joe says that neurons that, that fire together, wire together. Right. And right. we, and we can, un, we can unwire the ones that don't serve us by doing a lot more of the things that do serve us. And the more often, the quicker those neurons start firing together and staying together and big, building big neuro highways that are strong. Can, can I describe my neuro highway thing? I love my little philosophy on it. Go. I'll so, okay. So, so neuro, so here's how I look at the, the neuro pathways. I look up, I look at it like a highway but it's a dirt highway, okay? And so have you ever seen dirt bikes on a dirt bike track? They start, they st I'm talking to everybody, but they start making big ruts, right? And then the only place that bike can go is in the ruts because if they get off that rut, it causes them to, to wobble and, and have an accident. Well, that's what happens in our, in our brains. And this is the way I look at it. It becomes so well grooved that we don't even know there's a different way of thinking. So what has to happen first is we have to realize that we can think differently, we react differently, feel she, differently. Remember, remember, guys, we're talking about being happy. Right. So, so, so back to being choosing happy. Choosing to find positivity, choosing to find happiness, and then. And then reiterating it, reiterating it, reiterating it, right? And then so here's here was my experience. So first, being happy is in my control, right? So I have to choose to be happy. Well, what can I do to help me choose to be happy? There's tons of things, lots we cover in our courses, lots we do and lots of things that we do. But in essence, you use certain tools to help you find your way to happiness and feeling and choosing happiness. And then what happens is one day you react again to something. Just it's automatic. You react to something the same way you always have and you're not happy and you don't feel happy. And then you go, wait a minute, I don't like this. I like feeling that way better. And now you work with the same tools to get yourself back over there. And at first this happens often, and then it starts happening less and less. And then now you've rewired your brain and this new neural highway is big and long and wide open and smooth and there's no traffic. And this is the road that you choose to go down. And anytime you get off and you get over here, it doesn't feel good anymore where right now, being unhappy feels normal. It feels like who you are. And remember what she just said. We are normalizing a situation that we don't like, but we start identifying it. We start saying, I am unhappy. And so so that's a great place to start. Start not saying that. Say something different. Number one is start dissociating yourself from that emotion. Number two, start choosing the emotion that you want. Are you going to, it, it, you're going to go in with the best of intentions. You're going to have stop and restarts. Guys, it's the exact oh, same yeah. thing that we, we see with yeah. stopping and starting exercising, stopping and starting uh, nutrition, stopping and starting the negative think, uh, stopping and starting these same things that you have wired in. And 
guys, especially you sitting there listening to this, connecting to the story, you've been there. We understand that, especially you guys that are 40 and 50 plus that have probably been doing these same patterns for what? 50 years? Four, <laughs> five decades. Mm -hmm. um, you know, here we are, again, as Dr. Joe Dispenza says, having to break the pattern of being yourself, having to break the habit of being yourself. The only way to do that, only way we ever are able to do that is through rewiring, is through hard, concentrated work. Hard. It is it, hard. it does take consistent it's activity. Normal to be hard. It's normal to stop and restart. It's normal to not get it perfect from the beginning. It's normal. You said earlier, put, okay. Put, okay, sorry. It is okay. It's okay. Well, it's okay. I, that's where my conversation about grace comes in because it doesn't matter what it is. What people do is, is they fall off whatever they're working towards and then they just spiral down. Where if you say, oh, okay, I fell off and that's, and I chose that, especially when we're talking about food, I chose to eat that. It's okay to make that choice because if I have the choice in any given moment, I can make a different choice. In any given moment, I can make a different choice. You, you hear what she said at any given moment point you can make another choice right so uh, it, it, very similar to this so it, it, let's let's tie this together here guys let's do it how can how can you take action with it well number one you need to coin our midlife metabolic accelerator um it, it because alicia and i are working really really hard over these over a seven day time frame to start getting you wins <laughs> momentum is created in both directions if you're not creating positive momentum going in one direction and you're choosing the momentum the other way and remember in action is an action yeah creating momentum going in a positive direction by choice is what we work to get you on that way, as that momentum starts to pick up, just like an avalanche like that started as just a little itty bitty pebble at the top of a mountain, starts to ball up and ball up and ball up and ball up, it turns it into this unstoppable momentum. We are putting the brake on the negative momentum in your life, dissociating you from those, those patterns of the negativity, but then once we've abolished that, uh, that negative avalanche, we get the positive one going. Do you want to come on and say, Hey, we just want to say, Hey, this is, a, this is Facebook live. So, you know, and the way I say hello to my lovely wife, this is her, his beautiful wife. <laughs> Hi there, Bernadette. So you had said it earlier like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up what he's saying. It's, he said, put together a string of wins put together a string of wins. And I love that. I love that way of thinking about it. And I'm going to add to that to just tie this up. How do you put together that, that string of wins? One of the first things you do is start keeping your promises to yourself. Self promises are number, number one. one. If you, uh, if you can't trust yourself, you can't trust anybody. That's right. Honoring self promises. And even if it's just you being honest with yourself, you know what today I'm not going to follow my diet. I'm not going to follow the nutrition plan that I have set out. Just the, the sheer honesty of that is more important than saying you're going to do it and not doing it. Or Start I've there. chosen to exactly. not follow my meal plan today because I feel like when we, every time we make it a choice, we still have choice. So go ahead. Well, the second thing is this, and, and there's a lot of times I get people get mad at me for this, but something bad happens and i almost always do you remember grand grandpa marcy always smiling like yes. he always had a smile planted on his face i actually learned this from him um i remember i remember grandma getting mad at him over something one day and he was smiling what's wrong with you and i'm he would always smile well when something horrible happens i actually wind up smiling i i, I wind up smiling pretty much through everything and even when people get mad at me, why, why are you smiling? Because it's a lot better than crying. And I feel a little bit more resourceful because I'm not surprised if something bad happens, 
I'm just prepared to do something about it. And I need to figure out the best way to react right now. So I'm going to smile. I'm going to figure out exactly what to do. The smiling releases serotonin and it gives you the capability of being a lot more resourceful in the moment. Uh, it, you might get punched, but <laughs> you're going to feel a lot better. But at the same time, it's coming from a resourceful place. So choice in choosing, honesty, smiling. So you feel better than uh, feeling like shit. So you're breaking that pattern and join midlife metabolic accelerator so we can actually start taking you through all of the steps that it takes which are a little bit beyond the scope of it, what we could cover in just a, a 15 minute conversation here on facebook we could go on and on about this but don't forget don't lose fat not faith over 40 and you will find in the description here or the link or below the link to the intake form to join our seven day challenge what, what is the seven day challenge, Alicia? What's it called? Midlife Metabolic Accelerator Free Seven Day Challenge. We, Bam. We, <laughs> nailed it. And she's been practicing it because <laughs> she'd been fumbling over it. So I, <laughs> I wanted to mess with her, but she aced it. <laughs> All right, guys. Lose fat, not faith at 40. I hope to see you guys tomorrow. I uh, also hope to see you guys in the challenge. Talk soon. Bye. Bye.